Tacoma police say they are still looking into that. They say it is early in the investigation. But as I step aside here, you can see those bullet holes right there in that window. And those who work nearby say this is unsettling. It was just after 9 p.m. on Saturday when Tacoma police arrived at La Perla del Mar. It's a seafood restaurant on Pacific Avenue. Police say they found a 37-year-old man who was in the restaurant but had been shot and killed by someone else. The next day, you can see bullet holes in the windows as people tried to grab a bite to eat, not knowing why the restaurant was closed. It's pretty crazy. It's somewhere I eat a lot. Um, I mean, it's like right next door, so it's super easy to just go over there. Billy Simmons works nearby. I hope they get that figured out. I hope whoever did that gets caught. And right across the street is where Crimson Israel works. Right across the street, literally, and it's it's scary because, you know, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, like, who's to say something could have happened at our store, you know? Like, what if that person was at my store? For it to actually happen so close to my work, it is definitely very sketchy. Tacoma police haven't released a suspect name, but they did tell us the victim was a customer, adding that the restaurant was very busy. Crimson is hoping police can have a larger presence in the area. I'm kind of patrolling the streets a little bit more to try to prevent things from happening. Those here now making sure they're more aware while they're at work. Definitely going to be on high alert. I can guarantee that. So, and, and I will definitely be keeping up with all my employees and stuff, letting them know what's going on and just keep an eye out. Now, many who live and work in Seattle know it, that crime is up big time, and many have experienced it firsthand. And we can also tell you that more visitors, they're learning about our growing problem. Pike Place Market is a big draw for locals and tourists alike. What many people don't realize, right across the street, several businesses like Seattle Shirt Company have been broken into and vandalized multiple times in nearly two years. And the Target store in 2nd and Pike in downtown Seattle is one of the top locations in the city where officers responded to 911 calls last year. Chris Horton is visiting from Napa. I wouldn't say that it deters me, but it definitely makes me um, be concerned. These ladies are in town from Vancouver, Canada. Canada. They're visiting Seattle for the very first time. Just the weekend and just downtown area, Pike Place. According to the latest crime report, violent crime in Seattle has increased by 20%. It's not great that crime rates are up, of course, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's a deterrent. Yeah. We also didn't know before yeah. coming here. <laughs> Last year, Seattle saw the highest number of shootings and shots fired in a decade. Chinatown International District was among the top three neighborhoods that saw the largest increase in Seattle. There's been a lot of uh, shootings. Mayor Harrell said during his first month in office, he made sure police focus on a number of hot spots for criminal activity. One of them includes 12th Avenue South and South Jackson Street in Little Saigon. In the first three weeks of January, police made 37 arrests. Oh, I really found. Okay. Business owner Nick Boy owns Dong Tap Noodles, which is just across the street from that trouble spot. It's positive news when Mayor Harold said he will take this area as a priority. But Boy says it's too little, too late. It's a little bit too late for us, and we've decided to move out and, and relocate. With some minor etching of a license plate number and red spray paint, the Everett Police Department and folks at Rodland Toyota and Everett are hoping this will be an effective deterrent. We just, you know, are trying anything we can here for our local community. Colette Kellen is the service manager over at Rodland Toyota and says the available appointments to have this done to people's catalytic converters sold out in less than a couple days. It's been a very popular event. It's something that was apparent last month when cars were forming long lines waiting to get their converters tagged by the police department at the Everett Public Works building. The dealership wanted to get involved in part because they too have been a victim of stolen catalytic converters. You have to be ever prevalent about your surroundings. Because law enforcement and Kellen say it's happening more and more here and across the country. So for people like Steve Pedersen, bringing his car in was a no-brainer. I think a lot of folks are kind of thinking the same thing I am. You know, you got to do something. He says he tried going to a previous event like this, but the lines were so long, they didn't have time to work on his car. Here, his car was worked on and done in less than an hour. Heck, I mean, law enforcement's got enough headaches as it is. I mean, we may as well do all we can to, you know, help, you know, fight crime. Because it's a crime that comes with a hefty price tag. According to Kellen, a stolen converter can cost thousands of dollars to repair or replace. We really feel for the customers that are dealing with it. It's just crazy how fast it can happen.
in Everett. Nick Popham, come on news. Yeah, Eric, and these Republicans say until there is more clarity and certain revisions, this bill won't go anywhere. We've been throwing billions and billions of dollars at the problem, and it's gotten worse. State Senator Chris Gildon says he's already familiar with this playbook. There's this fear that we're going to create another governmental organization that's going to be ineffective. So is Representative Andrew Barkas. And if it was working, we wouldn't see the problem we have. And right now, these GOP lawmakers say, as is, they can't get behind Governor Inslee's massive $800 million homeless bill. I mean, there's all these reasons why we can't do this. They're primarily concerned because it's unclear how the cash will be given out, and they want to know more about oversight of programs. But we need to look at those solid measures of effectiveness, measures of performance. And it really does demand urgent action in many ways. During Thursday's press conference, the governor said if this bill passes, he's hoping to help local jurisdictions prioritize people living on highways, get into new housing coming online, emphasizing massive coordination with state, county, and city agencies. What exactly is the standard for success here? We have spent a lot trying to solve homelessness, but like I said, it doesn't mean that, they, that those efforts weren't effective. It just means that they weren't enough. This bill will also fund a new agency to help with encampment removals and outreach on state property. It's being sponsored by Democratic State Senator Patty Kuderer. This is an ongoing crisis, and we're continually trying to find new methods to address it. We also asked the governor about the type of measurable impact he's expecting to see on the ground. He didn't directly answer that question, but a spokesperson did say when it comes to changes along state highways, there would be visible results within months, not years. We're going to throw another ton of money out to all this stuff. And you and I will be having this exact same conversation next year with the problem just as bad as it is today. Hi, everyone. I'm Preston Phillips from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss our YouTube updates.